so I'm Alan Clubfish. I am, I guess, the um, guy that had the idea about Phoenix Cash and um, I'm the CEO of the company. Mm -hmm. um, for us, um, there's a lot of elaborate explanation we can get into um, regarding some of the features of Phoenix Cash, but where it really all starts is that what is true worldwide, um, whether it be in Seoul, um, in Singapore, in Melbourne, Australia, or New York, is that artists who are not famous are really struggling to make a living. Yeah. Um, and, um, and that um, is not only not changing, but there doesn't seem anybody particularly interested in trying to change it. Um, so we've come up um, with, I guess, what you call, could call a suite of things, starting with things that we can do immediately, and we think impactfully on actually changing the um, loss of the artists, um, the fate of the artists, so that they can actually earn a living. Um, I think it's um, all too common that you find artists who would love um, mm -hmm. to be spending their time on music, spending their time trying to earn a living elsewhere um, and spending uh, much less time than ideally on music. And that's sort of sad for the creative industry. So beginning with the artist, and that is, as I've indicated, our starting point, mm -hmm. um, um, we, um, we think there's four principal ways that we can um, deliver benefits initially and subsequently a myriad of other ways. Um, so the four principal ways are um, that first of all, and um, we've decided as part of um, our token sale, we are giving 30% of the tokens or 120 million tokens, right? Yeah. To artists. Now this is over a two year period. It'll be based on um, how often their songs play. So if it's 1% of the total plays, they'll get 1% of the tokens. But the idea of a token grant is first mm -hmm. of all to give something of value. And mm -hmm. secondly, we think it's important for um, jump starting, if you like, kickstarting the ecosystem that mm -hmm. artists actually have tokens in their hands, they relate to them, right? And they understand what their value is. Okay. Um, secondly, um, and very importantly, um, we are allowing artists to sell merchandise in a very different way to what they currently do. So okay. the way artists tend to make a living these days is they mm -hmm. play a gig, a show, and they sell a bit of merchandise to those people that come to a show. So mm -hmm. what that means is it's very limited in terms of time, when yeah. if you like their shop is open, and it's yeah. very limited geographically. Um, in time, they might play two, three, four gigs a week. So during those gigs, right, or during a short period after the gigs, they can actually sell, right, some merchandise. Geographically, it's only those people who have the good fortune to actually better come to the show, right? Um, so, so if you change that to be 24-7 and mm -hmm. to make a global audience, right, yeah. you will have an impact on the artist. Now, the artists, of course, understand that there's always been that option for them of selling merchandise mm -hmm. but um but one of the impediments is e-commerce and um, for an artist to work out how to set up e-commerce on a website right um some of them even don't have um websites as such right um they have you know their facebook page or um, whatever page it may be right mm -hmm. um, it, it, it can be daunting for an artist to try to do that so the beauty about cryptocurrency um is <laughs> that it actually enables the artists um, mm -hmm. to receive our coins. Um, they can set up a wallet, which should be simple enough, but if they find that in any way challenging, wow. we can set up a wallet for them. Yeah. And um, they are able to actually get coin for us for merchandise. Now, when we're speaking about merchandise, we're not speaking about standard boring stuff. We're speaking mm -hmm. about stuff that could be alluring to a fan. So yeah. it might do with access like a backstage pass or VIP. Mm -hmm. It might be a limited run on a special t-shirt. It might be a preview of up and coming music, whatever it is. These are things that the artist can really make money from. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing is they want the money. The fan wants the product, but the moment there's no way to match them. And cryptocurrency allows very easy matching. Um, yeah. We have an app which is ready. Um, and the app not only um, is ready for the fan, but it has a quite, um, wonderful, I think, admin panel for the artists where the only decisions the artists have to make is how many coins do they want to charge, right? what's the product, put up a picture of the product, a description, and they're done, right? Um, and then we can bring them a global audience. Artists, we think it's a great proposition. For the fan, mm -hmm. it is the other side of that coin, which mm -hmm. is the fan is extremely desirous of being able to interact with the artists, 
and being able to get things, but they have no easy way to do it other than showing up at a show or gig. Mm -hmm. um, and the one other aspect of this I should mention um, is that there are a number of middlemen involved in, um, in actually transacting you know, anything regarding merchandise. And mm -hmm. the number of middlemen, frankly, is quite shocking. So yeah. if you actually sell merchandise at a venue, the venue wants a percentage. Then yeah. the promoter of the show wants a percentage. The manager wants a percentage. The label wants a percentage. The publisher wants a percentage. So um, it's estimated, and I can't tell you how accurate this is, but it's estimated for every thousand dollars of mm -hmm. music related product that's sold, $23 goes to the artist, which is obviously abysmal, it's terrible. So going on, so, so that's the second benefit. Um, uh, first of all, a token grant to artists, secondly, enabling them to sell merchandise and access, et cetera, right? Um, yeah. The third benefit is that we're making the app customizable by the particular artist or band. So mm. within about 10 or 15 minutes, they can yeah. wrap their social media into it. Um, they can make sure it's their products on the front page, whether it's their music, their merchandise, whatever it is. So suddenly it becomes their app rather than a standard app, right? I and I can explain to you how we technically achieve that because it's not easy mm -hmm. to technically achieve, but yeah. we're doing that. So, so in, in a very short amount of time, it's customizable. And what we then do is mm that any fans that use the particular band version of the app will mm. actually be providing income to the band. So if you have a band and you have 5,000 fans or 5 million fans, whatever it is, right, and they are using the app, we earn revenue from them using the app. Mm. We earn advertising revenue when people are listening to music. We earn um, revenue when merchandise is sold. So we are giving a portion of our revenue to the band. Now, per fan, it's not gonna be very much, but in aggregate, for even a few thousand fans, it can result in a monthly income which simply doesn't exist. So it's a new form of income. And I guess our philosophy is we're not going to change the current system at all. Mm -hmm. Everybody's entrenched um, in terms of what they earn from it. You know, no label, no publisher, no promoter is going to wake up in the morning and say, oh, we want to be generous to the artist. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. so, so what we're doing is taking what's in our capacity, which is mm -hmm. our app, right, our tokens, and saying, let's use them to benefit um, the artist. Um, okay. And the final part, which is um, going to take longer, all the things I've just mentioned, right, are either fully ready or about to be ready. But mm -hmm. the, 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 um, the thing that's going to take longer is actually using the blockchain, right, for the benefit yeah. of the artist, for more transparent reporting and for royalty payments. Um, and, um, and there will be resistance to this because um, without... Um, being political or without, um, you know, casting any prejudicial views on it. Um, mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is the people who are at the center of the system now mm -hmm. will not want a decentralized system, right? If you're at the center of the system, it's a nice place to sit, I suppose, and yeah. you don't want it to be decentralized, right? Um, yeah. Also, there's something in the uh, music business which mm -hmm. is called breakage. And the way breakage works is breakage. Yeah. that the rights holders collect money from everyone, but mm. then they don't distribute to all the money because sometimes the artist is hard to find, sometimes they're in a different country, right? Sometimes the ownership is not clear. So it's estimated that anywhere from 20 to 50% of all money is collected, mm. right, goes to breakage, right? So, so a system which is both transparent and efficient may yeah. not necessarily suit everybody in the music industry, mm. but our view is, Let's start up um, in doing this with non-signed artists. Let's start with those artists who, you know, don't have um, a label or publisher opposing us, right? Um, and let's demonstrate, and this should be our burden, it should be our onus to demonstrate it, that it works. And if it works, maybe it will catch on in a wider sense, right? But we certainly think the blockchain is set to revolutionize a lot of this. Now, there'll be people who say to you, that mm -hmm. there are issues with blockchain, like how can it process transactions of 25 million songs? How can we prevent theft of royalties from the blockchain? All issues, no doubt. But I think over time, as blockchain matures and as better systems come into place, blockchain is ideally suited to actually um, do a far superior type of reporting and, um, and indeed royalty payments. And the artist can at any point see exactly what's going on rather than being 
in the blind until I get some sort of statement. Um, so those are the four okay. principal ways. Now, there are a bunch of secondary ways, and the secondary ways are our view that a band, um, you know, a struggling band or a band that's not making enough money, right, um, there's a lot of things that they could benefit from in terms of touring, et cetera, which is a principal way they make money. Yeah. So working out, for example, how they can best um, actually make bookings for venues, right? So yes. it's not just a random few places that occur to them, that it's comprehensive, that they send out a message to all venues in a locality, right? Mm -hmm. Or how they can um, actually go on tour with the most um, efficient um, tour itinerary so they use the least amount of gas or how they can get insurance for their van or whatever it may be. You know, these are lots and lots of tools that we think as a second phase we want to bring to the artist, right? Mm -hmm. So that the, that the life of the playing, touring, non-famous artist becomes a bit easier as we also help them with their income. I think there are two things. I think you have a target market for an ICO and a target market for your operations post ICO. And I think to some extent, you know, um, maybe the answers are a little bit different, right? So okay. I, think, I think our target market for ICO Right, mm -hmm. is um, we, um, I must say, and I'm not saying it because um, you happen to be interviewing me from Seoul, I'm saying it because we feel us, right? Uh, that yeah. we feel very comfortable mm -hmm. in setting up an ecosystem mm -hmm. that we can demonstrate in Seoul, right? I think there's a real openness of attitude, yeah. right, towards what we're doing, right? You know, some of the people are helping us, um, some of which I think you know, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, have connections in the music industry, right? Yeah. Um, um, have connections to bands. So our feeling is that we're actually going to demonstrate this system working in the Korean markets, right? And we also are obviously very aware that um, the Korean market is a very vibrant market when it comes to um, blockchain um, mm. and tokens, right? And um, we understand that very, very well. So, so um, we're going to be spending a lot of time in Korea. Um, we, we, you, you won't get rid of us anytime soon, right? Okay. So, um, so um, I, I think that's the first thing. In terms of markets for ICO, obviously they are the traditional Korean, Japanese, Chinese markets, right? Mm. Um, as more fiat investment is coming in, you know, you have to say it's also Australia, UK, United States, Europe, right? Mm. But I think our primary markets that we're really concentrating on for the ICO um, are definitely Korea, Japan, and China, right? Notwithstanding okay. the fact that there's obviously some issues in China. Now, then the question is, what about post ICO in mm. terms of operations? Um, I've just written a blog, you, um, and I will send it to you. We're about to post this, right? Mm. Um, and it's about, um, we're, we're creating a series of blogs called Lessons from the Road, right? Lessons and what we, learn, what we learn as we go out into the world, right? Mm -hmm. And I think what we've learned is that whether it is Seoul or Singapore or New York, the mm -hmm. fate of the artist is absolutely precisely identical. There is almost no variation, which mm -hmm. is the bands are earning extremely little from streaming unless they're famous. Right, yeah. they're not satisfied with their streaming income at all. Right, yeah. they're having to augment their income with jobs either full or part time. Mm -hmm. They are extremely interested in ideas that will get them more revenue. They would love to better sell their merchandise more easily to a wider audience. Right, among other things. Right, so we're learning that really the market is global. Right, yeah. and that that we ought to try to get our app into most markets because there isn't variation, right? Now, obviously you have to localize the app, you have to have local languages, et cetera, to make people comfortable with it, right? And we understand that very well, but our, 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 our view is that the fate of the artist is really identical. And, and that's just the blog that I wrote yesterday, as a matter of fact, um, it's hit us that, mm. uh, you know, um, our videographer um, has interviewed bands in Seoul, um, two days ago interviewed bands in Singapore. And, you know, if you listen to what the bands are saying, and we've interviewed a band recently in New York, if you listen to what the bands are saying, they're saying exactly the same thing. Um, you could say, to use an appropriate industry metaphor, they're all singing the same song. Correct. Uh, having said that, you know, obviously, 
priorities are always important, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, we're going to start with those places we're familiar with and, and that we've become familiar with, right, through the ICO process itself, right? So, you know, we would be very interested, right, in launching in, you know, Seoul, right, um, you know, um, before, let's say, launching it, right, in some place we've never been to, right? Um, mm -hmm. But having said that, we think that, the dedicated focus on trying to bring it to the world is worthwhile because artists have all the same issues everywhere in the world. I think uh, the Korean market is amazing for doing our sort of enterprise, mm -hmm. right? Um, and we want to be much more involved in it. Um, it was great. The, the, the short word was great. Um, okay. You have, you have um, uh, this is maybe a bit premature to say because we're just about to make a proposal, but you have um, wonderful festivals, like you have the Green Plugged Festival, um, mm -hmm. is, um, which plays to, I understand, about 30,000 fans in Korea, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Um, that, um, that actually, um, by coincidence, happens to be um, to end one day before our ICO ends. So wow. we have, um, we, 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 we um, have some interesting plans to make that a sort of um, celebration. celebration of how our system works, right? Yeah. And hopefully a celebration of a successful um, ICO. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and so we're just about to make um, a proposal in that regard. We've been introduced to people that really understand the market well. Um, mm -hmm. You'll notice on our site um, that um, one of our um, advisors is um, the ex-head um, of Universal Music, right, um, for Southeast Asia, um, and the ex-head of business development for all of Asia. He's introduced us um, to a counterpart um, in Korea that's helping us understand, right, the music scene there. But it's a very vibrant music scene, and, um, and we have some ideas um, which we'll reveal in the next interview once we speak to the people about how viable they are. But mm -hmm. we have some ideas about how we can actually integrate with festivals like this, right? Um, yeah. And we were surprised because as we were speaking about this festival, um, we discovered there was a festival in summer by the beach in Korea. I won't try to pronounce the name of the town. I can't fully remember it, right? <laughs> and, and yet another festival nearby. So you have a very vibrant scene, lots of festivals, mm. lots of shows happening, right? Um, and it strikes us as being a wonderful place to do it. Look, I'm probably too ignorant to be entitled to you, to be uh, bullish or bearish, right? Mm. But I can, I can talk about it from our perspective rather than a generalized way, right? Okay. Um, I, what, what I do think is the case that there is a shaking out mm. of, um, of bad propositions, right? Or bad people behind propositions, right? Yeah. And I think that's desirable, right? Because, yeah. you know, you had shams, you had people that didn't really understand their markets, right? So, um, you know, another blog I've written, which you're welcome to look at, which is posted, is called Taking the ICO High Road, right? And that means trying to do an ICO a bit better, right? And among yeah. those things, obviously, are, you know, the idea has to be robust, right? Um, it has to be a good idea, right? But you probably need also to have industry experts whose view um, is shared with yours that it is a good idea because you can be, you know, say, wow, this is a great way to revolutionize the music industry, but mm -hmm. people understand the music industry will, might say, well, it's not feasible or it's not desirable, or whatever. So you have to have a really good idea to begin with, I think. You have to then have people that understand um, the subject enough to better say, this can really work, right? And mm -hmm. thankfully, we have that. Um, then I think what's really, really important is you have to have a product, right? Mm -hmm. um, a product ready before the ICO happens. Now, I'm not saying that if you just have an idea, an ICO is inappropriate, but, but it obviously helps to have a product and it helps with regards to tokens, but it's very hard for a token to, right, um, be well supported before you actually have a product, right? So what happens is ICOs go out, Right, and then if there's no product, there's a waiting period during which maybe ICO, uh, or maybe token subscribers are not that happy. So I think to come back to your question because I've digressed a little bit, but I think that um, I think that um, there's going to be a shaking out um, where there's more solid propositions happening in ICOs than perhaps have happened in the past, right? And mm -hmm. I think with that shaking out, right, um, there's also going to be simultaneously happening um, a more um, sophisticated understanding of 
crypto. I yeah. think as time goes on, people will understand that crypto is here to stay. It's not a flash in the pan. It's not just a bubble that's going to burst and there's going to be disaster. But mm -hmm. probably there'll continue to be major fluctuations in prices, etc. I don't really know. I'm speaking probably beyond my depth of knowledge, but that's my sense, right? Okay. So, so you know, so I think that as people become familiar, more familiar, as the quality of everything becomes better, right? I think you know there'll be more stability to the crypto markets. There'll be better propositions coming to ICOs. I think it will all mature, if you like. And as it matures, I think it's got an incredibly rosy future. Um, I think that anybody who reflects on it a lot would have to come to the conclusion that crypto is here to stay. It's not going to disappear, right? And, mm -hmm. and as it stays, it's going to get better and better, right, in a lot of different ways. Um, the pre-sale is coming up and um, we are working as every ICO no doubt does, furiously, right? Um, um, but I, I think there's two aspects of our furious work, right? One is obviously preparing for the ICO, but also is preparing the whole ecosystem that we want to function, right? You know, starting with the ICO. We don't want there to be any gap, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. so, so in terms of how you prepare for a pre-sale in the ICO, I think it's um, pretty simple. You want to get your message across, you want um, potential subscribers and ICO to understand us. Um, you know, what we're doing in Seoul is um, probably, well, not probably, it's definitely the most advanced we are to date in our preparation. So we are making sure that local people in the crypto community um, are involved so they can spread the world of the crypto community. We're setting up, you know, all of our um, channels for communication um, there so that the word really, really gets out. Um, we are making sure that we are often available, right, in Seoul so that people can have the comfort of actually speaking to the team and understanding what our vision is, understanding who we are, um, et cetera. We are doing something um, which, um, which um, is perhaps a little unique, which is we have a videographer with us, um, a, a, a brilliant videographer, Jordi, mm -hmm. who is um, um, daily recording anything we do and yeah. what you'll see coming up now is the high points and the low points you know yeah. both the stuff that excites us and the stuff that um, will occasionally probably demoralize us right it is not an easy um, process always right um, but the idea is to get the message out to make people understand what the proposition is and to allow them to then use their best judgment as to whether or not it's something that they want to be um, involved in. Well, first of all, let me say, although the starting point is the artist and the fan, I don't want to paint us as saints. We're no saints, right? We are uh, business people that are trying to establish a viable business. So it's not yeah. all altruism. It's also commerce. And mm. we would be lying if we pretended it was all altruism. But we think it can be a win-win-win situation mm. where, right, um, where subscribers to token and fans and artists can all do well, right? And at the moment, the point is, it's not a win-win situation, right? Mm. There are those that do well in the music industry, but the artists are often not among those that are doing well. And that's what we consider to be something that needs change because it's crazy the whole industry exists on the output of artists, but the artists are the ones suffering, right? And, mm. you know, maybe that's traditionally been the case. Maybe it's nobody's fault, but we would like to rectify it. So long-term, um, long-term, we would like to become a dominant platform where, right, there's easy access for the artists to do whatever they'd like to do, right? Mm -hmm. So they want to share music with the world, they can share music, right? They want to share merchandise, they can do that. They want assistance in their, you know, in making a living, we can provide that. So the idea is it's a whole ecosystem that mm -hmm. simply doesn't exist at the moment, which is very much focused on those artists which don't have it as easy, which struggle um, a little bit or maybe a lot. Um, yeah. um, and so creating that ecosystem is our long-term goal. We think that when we do, they will be benefits, right? And we don't want our benefits to come at the expense of the artists. We don't want to take big commissions or big anything, right? There'll be benefits, hopefully, in terms of the token. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we think is that you know, most ICOs go on a simple premise, which is 
they attract a certain number of thousands of investors. And then if there's more investors, uh, maybe the token is well supported. Yeah. If we do our job correctly, mm. and we say if, we don't take it lightly. It's, it is a big if, right? Yeah. And you have to believe that we'll do our job correctly or not believe it, right? <laughs> but if we do our job correctly, then we might start out with 10,000, right? Um, token subscribers, mm. but... Mm -hmm. Um, after six months, we might have a million fans. And yeah. that obviously will give real support to the token, right? And, and that's important also for people who have entrusted us with their money, right, in the token, right, to know that there's a good chance that yeah. we can do something decent with the token, right? So I think those, I, I think, you know, long term, we want this to be a successful ecosystem that works for our supporters as well as for the artists and the fans, right? Um, mm -hmm. Shorter term, we want to make sure that as we build this, that people are doing okay along the way. I think, you know, when I say it's a big if, mm -hmm. we are spending um, a lot of time, a lot of effort, um, even a lot of money to make sure that that if it becomes mm. a smaller if, right? And, right. Yeah. and, um, and um, you know, first of all, you know, I, I am surrounded um, by really, really competent people. I have mm. you know, um, um, one partner, um, mm. who, Lance Ford, who's been my treasured partner for a number of years and who has got great um, advertising expertise, which is very important in terms of monetizing music playing, right? Yeah. Um, I have another partner, um, Richard Lee, who has um, a sort of rock star banking career, right? Mm -hmm. um, and who, among the various ideas that he, um, you know, uh, met in his career of doing some 180 um, IPOs, right? Mm -hmm. And now he is um, very absorbed with ICO, right? Um, decided um, through his career that, you know, there were a couple of ideas excited him and thankfully um, he decided we were one of them, right? So I think we've got, I've got very able primary partners. We've got a very able team and mm. all of this intend to reduce the if, but there always is an if. And, you know, um, I think anybody who would portray an ICO as something, you know, other than speculative is misleading. It's always going to be speculative, but we think we, 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 we have an absolutely strong, um, overwhelming conviction that we're going to make this happen and we're not mm. going to stop until we do make it happen, right? Um, we think um, we, we've got sort of demonstrated staying power, if you like. We are going to make it. It is very exciting because um, we think it's a massive opportunity, right, mm. to really, really make some sort of change. <laughs>